Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Love Fruit podcast and today I'm joined by a special guest that's Matthew Lorimer and Matthew is someone I've known for probably about six or seven years now maybe a little bit longer. Um, Funny story he came along to one of the fruit lucks I was doing and it turned out that we lived really close to each other and had never met each other before so uh, Matthew's been involved in the UK Fruit Fest a lot. He's helped a lot with that in the background and at the event as well. So a lot of you have been there will know Matthew. And he's he's been all over the place. You've, I know he's been to um, the Woodstock Fruit Festival and he's been to, he's, been, he's done a long water fast with Lauren Lockman. He's done uh, retreats with Chris Kendall and I think maybe other places. So you've been all over, Matthew. Um, be good to hear more about you and, and your story. Is there anything else? you want to say about yourself in an introduction? Um, no, I don't know if I can add to that, apart from I've been on the fruit diet for probably about seven years, as you said, and that's how long we've known each other since pretty much the beginning. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, and I have been all over the place. Obviously, I've been to a lot of retreats and, and such, just traveling the world, eating all the best fruit I can and meeting lots of good people, so yeah. Awesome. And we should probably say you're also, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a manager, software developer. Is your profession or is it, is that the right yeah. word or not? Um, right? I'm, well, I'm the CTO. I'm the CTO at a, a company here in Scotland who develop open source software. Um, so CTO is the chief technical officer. Um, so in essence, I, I'm a software engineer who manages other software engineers and other such things with to do with computers and such. Excellent. 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 Um, so it's quite good because you're not, it's not like you're some raw vegan chef or something. You don't have some kind of bias like that. You, you, you're uh, you don't make a living out of the, the raw food thing, but it's something you do probably primarily just for your own health and enjoyment of life, I guess, but we'll, we'll get into that. So, let me ask you about your story. Were you were you brought up on any kind of special diet, like vegan or vegetarian, anything like that? No, not at all, really. Um, when I was younger, I was all really, really a, a very fussy eater. And as much as my family, we ate quite well, as my dad was a chef and we always aimed to eat quite well, I was quite a fussy eater. So I always ate very specific things from very specific shops, etc. Um, so always been a very fussy eater. Um, so other than eating a lot more, probably less, drinking less Coke than other people or such, uh, you're going to fast food restaurants maybe less or eating takeaway mm-hmm. food less than other people. Um, I would say we ate pre- a pretty normal diet, um, nothing special, nothing vegetarian or vegan. Um, so and your dad's a chef, isn't he? Yes, my dad's a chef, so, um, yeah, um, he, that's his, a bit of his passion, so I think me switching to this lifestyle actually gave him some more insights into eat, making foods this way. Um, yeah. As my, my journey into the fruit diet didn't start with fruit, it started with more vegetarian, more vegan things initially, so, yeah, yeah and it has helped him to broaden his horizon and from that perspective, and and I remember you told me a story though that when you were at school you would sometimes just have a bag of sweets basically for your lunch. Okay. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> that, that is very true. Um, yeah, so given my own free reign, my own money when I was at school, um, I would sometimes throw away what my family provided for me and uh, yeah, go to the sweet shop and the, the lady would see me coming and she would take out, literally take out a much bigger bag that she, she would use for other people. And <laughs> yes, we would fill that up. Uh, so yeah, that that's probably um, uh, some of the worst things I've ate is <laughs> just penny sweets. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and what was the start of like, you started to sort of become more conscious about your diet and changing it. Why, why did you start to go in that direction? Yeah. Um, well, I guess it all started with me having quite severe acne on my skin. Um, it was very noticeable. Um, all from when I was about 
probably about 15 onwards, it really just started to get worse. I, I really enjoyed popping all the spots. Such, <laughs> so apparently that makes it worse, but um, it just felt natural to do it mm. and such. But um, from off the back of that was probably my first venture into looking for things. Um, I started researching how I could cure my acne per se. Um, I tried various things, um, using olive oil, using toothpaste, um, taking every supplement under the sun in a certain order, just mm -hmm. lots of random things. Um, that eventually, it, it led me down the path of going the medical route, um, to which they gave me, they tried various solutions, some that had better effect than others. Um, I know there was one based on zinc, which seemed to have the best effect, but apparently because I stopped using it, it wasn't effective. So I don't know if that would have actually solved the issue or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I doubt it from what I know now. Um, but eventually it led me um, to seeing a dermatologist who just instantly basically just prescribed me on Accutane or Roaccutane as it's known here in the UK, um, which is a very... Um, common use or a very commonly used drug to fight acne um, and it's quite a severe drug. They had to make sure you, you weren't prone to suicide, check all your bloods before you used it and such because there's apparently quite a few people committed suicide from taking it wow. or so they said. Um, yeah, uh, so I was fairly instantly put on that um, after seeing the dermatologist and this was quite an experience as it effectively what how it works is it really dehydrates your whole system. Wow. Which is quite the opposite of what I'm able to do right now. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so um, when I was taking that, it really started to dehydrate everything. The acne went away. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember how long it took for the acne to go away, but it basically completely went away. But my, my mouth, round about my mouth would start dehydrating like quite severely. I'd have to constantly moisturize it. I had to go home from work one day just to pick up my moisturizer, uh, just to, just to moisturize. Yeah. Uh, I would put an eye drops in my eyes um, to keep them moist. Um, yeah, it was it was quite an experience. Um, I, I do, they, they give you a dose based on your weight and for whatever reason, I decided I was going to deliberately underdose on it. Just, I don't know, just try and reduce the effects of it. I, I can't remember the exact reasons. Um, yeah, so after a course of that, it seemed to take away my acne and everyone was happy. My, my family were particularly happy. It was them that really pushed me down this route. So um, yeah, it seemed to be a success from that regard, but it, it didn't leave the rest of my body in the best state. Yeah. Um, my joints, for example, were I could really notice like my elbow joints, they just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And they would click a lot and yeah, and and the acne did come back to a to a small degree. Um I don't know why it came back, but um but it did come back. So in essence, yeah, it had made an improvement to my acne. Um but it, it left me more issues. Uh, and this was the point at which um, I probably started looking for more solutions. Um, right. And it was probably on an off chance comment off from my sister that she spoke about an alkaline diet. Yep. Just, just a random comment. <laughs> and, and off the back of that, I instantly Googled alkaline diet and just took the first link I found and Almost overnight, I just started trying this diet out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this diet was about eating a lot of things that I was not used to eating. Right. It was about eating a lot of salads, a lot of beans, a lot of... And just to yeah. be clear, this was your first dietary change? Like, this is the first time you tried to change your diet? Yeah, apart from taking lots of supplements. Yeah. Right. Um, right. I'll, up to that point, I was maybe trying to eat more food because um, people always said that I could I could eat a lot more and put more weight on mm, mm. Um, and such. So, I mean, at this point, I was probably eating, I was probably the less fussy eater than I was when I was younger. Yeah. Still not. Um, 
I still wouldn't hit a lot of things. But yeah, I just decided to switch to some some random diet I found on the internet um, just to try it out. I, um, so yeah, uh, I, I barely gradually went into it. Like I would make things like toast with tahini, with seeds and salad on top. Um, Sounds quite good. A, yeah, it, it was <laughs> quite good. Like, but it was, it was something I was not used to eating at all. It was right. a complete, a complete shift um, from what I was eating before. Yeah. Uh, and one of the big positives of this diet, obviously, was that it cut out dairy almost entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would suggest that probably was a, a big benefit of that diet. It was, uh, I felt. I believe I felt a lot better on this diet initially. Um, but the the real, the funny thing about this diet was that they really were against eating fruit. Um, right. You were only allowed to, uh, grapefruit or lemons or limes. Now, luckily mm-hmm. for me, I, I, I quite liked eating grapefruit, so <laughs> I could eat quite a lot of grapefruit. Um, but Long term on this diet, um, I don't feel it would have been sustainable. Did it improve um, your acne? Did you see much of a change? Yes, it uh, effectively took away my acne. My nice. Short term on this diet, um, I mean, the acne did come back quite quite prominently following mm-hmm. the Accutane. Not as bad, it was more in Pacific areas. Yeah. But after a short time, a relatively short time, maybe six six to 12 months, I would suggest. I, I can't remember the exact details. Like the acne just went away in effect. Um, and this was probably because of the change in my diet. So uh, I was effectively, the diet was very much a vegetarian diet with some chicken or randomly in it. Right, right, um, right. On Pacific dishes. So in essence, the, the diet provides you with some recipes and yeah, and my mum was always quite into eating or cooking some interesting dishes, so she very much enjoyed it. Um, this is where we got a lot of new dishes from, like we, we'd make chili non carne, was one of the recipes. Um, so Right, so it was yeah, more it was, more vegetarian, more vegetables and whole foods than you were yeah. used to. Yeah. And but no fruit. That was Yeah, it was no fruit, yeah. Uh, no sugar in general. Yeah, so that was the that was the basis of the diet. The alkaline diet was based on how when they burnt it or something, how alkaline it was. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, fruit would come out acidic at this point. But um, it was I think it was based on Robert 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 Young. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, and I got a special water ionizer from the site and such and. Tried everything out, so you also you also told me like it was a lot of salt. Yes, yes, that that was another big part of the diet was that you would you would get your water and then you'd put special salts in it. Really, what they were able to do, it's suggested they were able to do is up the pH of it, but <laughs> it, it just got to the point where I could actually feel the salt. Right, I just felt like I was having too much salt. Right, right. Um, because they they recommended, for example. Um, what's the pink salt? Himalayan salt. Yeah, yeah. And I would put you put all the Himalayan salt on your foods, and then you're drinking water with salt. It's yeah, it was really excessive salt at that point. Um, <laughs> point I just didn't feel good on it. Um, and I think eventually I, yeah, it just didn't feel sustain. It just didn't feel sustainable. It didn't feel like it was satiating me. Mm, mm. Um. It got to the point where late at night, um, I would maybe sneak other food, um, for example, crisps. Um, I, I can't remember what else, because um, that's what I used to do at late at night was I would eat crisps, like salt and vinegar crisps. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I, I, what I think about it now, it's kind of funny, is that um, I, no one else would have bothered that I was eating this, but I was waiting till late at night to to go and eat this when yeah. no one else would really cared. Um, which is a funny thing. I look back on it now that I was <laughs> hiding this, but 
no one else. It's only really me that. that yeah, I on, see. I so. see. So, so yeah. you were doing that, and at what point did you start to make further changes? Yeah. So this would have been around um, twenty twelve, twenty. Um, that I started from from this website that I was following. Um, I managed to latch on to other people at the time who were in what they call the raw food movement, like yeah, like David Wolf. Um, there were some other people that I can't remember their names. Or, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, so I remember watching videos on YouTube where they would talk about supplements that you need yeah and they would go for it was like a big conference basically showed you need to buy this supplement and that supplement and this <laughs> supplement and and i remember there was one that was like it was something I like a long what long longevity warehouse conference or something like that yes that that <laughs> sounds about right yeah so it's like all these so, over overweight guys telling women what supplements yeah. they should buy <laughs> yeah so i mean i I started looking into this and and I think at, at this point I was just starting to be disillusioned with what what they were what they were saying and that you needed to have all this stuff and just random stuff like with alkaline diet we were a lot in a lot of whole foods and that kind of resonated with me eating vegetables and stuff I could see that but this was then talking about eating lots of strange things lots of supplements and I'd already been down the supplement route and I wasn't too enamored with it. So luckily at that point, um, a, a YouTube video popped up from Julian Ryder, uh, basically yeah. saying, why is David Will fat, overweight and such? Um, so I must have watched that and yeah. Um, and as I've said to you, that's the first Julian Ryder video I came across as well. So. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I remember coming across David Wolf first as well, and then Julian Ryder after. Yeah, so I don't think it was on his official channel, but it just kind of led me down the path of watching Julian Ryder's videos. So, I mean, back in the day, he was very aggressive with his message and very pro eating fruit at that time, like getting your bananas in, mm-hmm. getting everything in. Um, so I guess this must have had an effect on me. Um, because probably the least opportune moment I decided to, to try it. And mm-hmm. um, I was working in Oxford at the time. I, I generally work in Scotland, but I was visiting a client in Oxford and I was staying in a pub in the middle of nowhere with no car or anything. And I only had access to a waitress at lunchtime. Uh, and it was at this point I decided to go a hundred percent raw, just, just randomly to try it. I don't know. I can't remember exactly why I decided this point, but, I guess Julian Raider's message was getting through to me. Um, and I went to Waitrose and got some bananas, and some blueberries. So obviously the bananas were, were not that ripe. I didn't realize that at this point. So uh, I was eating them, but didn't eat a lot of them. I ate the blueberries and yeah, realized that I didn't have enough food. So I looked at the menu on this place I was staying at and they had a salad. So I ordered the salad and ate the salad. Yeah, and I kind of just tried it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of when I made the switch. Um, Did you find that or, difficult to make a transition towards a raw diet? And by the way, was that did you go vegan and raw at the same time? Yeah. Um, so obviously, my previous diet, I went. I was in the alkaline diet, which was mostly not fully vegetarian. It was mostly vegetarian. I was still eating some meat at that point, mm-hmm. mainly chicken. Uh, and was then it, I was it dairy free that diet? It was dairy free. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was a big part of it. Although when yeah. I I came to the supplement part of it, they were trying to promote a product that was based on dairy. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember what it was, but uh, yeah. It was, like colostrum or something? Or? Yeah, exactly that. Yes. <laughs> um, so luckily I, I missed out on that. Uh, 
and managed to find the fruit diet. Yep. Um, so yeah, this was a week in Oxford where I, I kind of tried it. Um, and myself, I'm quite a strong willed person. Like if I want to do something like this, I seem to be able just to switch and, and, and go through it. Even if I'm not, wasn't eating enough, I can just keep going. I've got willpower to keep going with it. Um, but when I went back home, obviously I had cupboards and cupboards of beans and, and stuff all set up for my, my current diet. And obviously it's, it's just myself eating this diet. Um, so both of my parents, they, they weren't too happy that I was stopping eating these, these things. Um, but in essence, I, I just started eating more and more fruit. Um, and as I understood what 80-10-10 was, um, at that time, it was the concept of eating 80-10-10 or 80-10-10 raw vegan. And... Um, as much as I wanted to eat fully raw, um, because that's what people were promoting online, um, I ate a lot of fruit during the day, and then in the evening I would have um, typically baked potatoes or boiled potatoes. And this went on for a while, um, where I would increasingly eat more and more baked potatoes. Like Just eventually I would just get an extra plate of baked potatoes um that they would just never satiate me um obviously i was quite new to the diet and was still learning so in essence throughout the day i was eating fruit for breakfast and lunch and then i would come to dinner and try and eat all these potatoes and um, usually with avocado like a guacamole and a, and a salad mm-hmm. and yeah that's and then after this i was still hungry um uh, and what I found was eat, the, what what could I eat it was really I wanted to eat fruit, so I was eating fruit, but eating fruit after eating potatoes and such and avocado. Yeah. It just was not a good combination. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um so um I can't remember exactly why, but I remember the Pacific date that it was Easter Sunday on twenty twelve that I decided to stop eating potatoes and go 100% raw, uh, mainly because it wasn't working for me, um, eating half, half cooked, half raw. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, I can't remember why my sister didn't believe I could do it or something, but that was kind of like the, the premise or the basis for me <laughs> making the switch. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, the longer I did it, obviously, I, I learned more. I learned when fruits were ripe. Like, I learned to eat bananas when, when they were ripe. What were the sources you were learning from? Was it mostly YouTube? Or did you buy books and things? Or a- anything else help you at the time? Yeah, so I, I remember I got the 801010 book for Christmas. That was at the top of my Christmas list. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it was mainly watching YouTube videos. Um, I think mainly watching Durian Rider. Um, I remember watching Dan McDonald's Life Generator. I remember yeah. I watched him long before. The, yeah, I'd seen him before, um, but he was one of the people I was I was watching. Um, it's hard to remember who else I watched at the time. Um, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was mainly Julian Ryder I was watching, and obviously he's talking at that time. He's talking about getting the bananas in, so I started having banana smoothies with ten bananas and um, whatnot. Um, yeah, it's hard to even remember now exactly what I was eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back then, because I've come such a long way since then. Sure. Um, I really feel like it was a really gradual process overall. As much as I maybe switched to raw in quite a dramatic way at the start, um, I really feel that every year I just improve my diet and learn something new and and make changes as I go on. Um, I suppose early on I'm drinking more shop bought juices or pasteurized sure, juices sure. or 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 things that I would now would not be able, would not enjoy would not mm-hmm. would not want to eat. 
So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So, how long do you think it took for you to like you were on a hundred percent raw and like you never went back? What? How long did it take for you to get to that stage? You think? How long did it take me to get to that stage? Um, well, really, from Easter Sunday, I'd never really looked back. Right. Right. Um, as I said, I'm very strong willed. So even if I was at points where I know I wasn't eating enough, I could just keep going. I would not right. deviate. Um, I think there are times when you have phases where you eat maybe less optimal things, but mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. ultimately it was always as raw as it possibly can be. Sure. Um, so, and as I said, I, gradually I, I phased these things out. So Sure. And um, so how yeah. was that around about the same time? When did you come to the Fruit Luck and first meet myself? Was that around about the same time or was that a little bit later? Yeah, so um, I was obviously getting into this in 2012. And, and I remember the Woodstock Fruit Festival was on in 2012 and I seen Jurian Rider there. And I think you were at that one, so... Yeah, it was after this point that I think I went on ferry bananas a day and and searched for people, um, in my local area. Um, I mean, I think it's funny that I never did this before, um, with any other diet. Look, look for other people, but with the fruitarian diet, I don't know. I must have been encouraged to do it. Um, uh, and yeah, I can't remember how I found your fruit luck, but yeah, um, I might have posted it, it on that site. Or yeah, something. you might. Yeah, you might have done. Uh, and obviously, yeah, we. But it's it's um, funny because it's funny because I did the same thing when I went on thirty bananas a day, and I looked for people in Glasgow, and I and I think I met I think it was maybe thirty people or twenty people or something, and I messaged them all, and I didn't really, and I realised like I thought they were all still active in the forum, but most of them weren't, and some of them were. I remember speaking to one of them like, oh yeah, I tried that for a week or whatever, you know, like I didn't realise that they weren't that into it and the, yeah, they, I guess none of them were that interested in getting back to me or they didn't message me back or whatever. But, um, yeah. And, I, I don't think I messaged anyone personally. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, from there you went to the UK fruit fest. Was that the first bigger event? Um, I don't, I don't remember. I think the, the woods, cause I remember when we first met up, um, uh-huh. We met up at the Fruit Luck and yeah. at your Fruit Luck, and there was, I think there was only four of us there. Um, in the Botanic Gardens? In Botanic Gardens, yeah. Because I, I was, I'd never even been to Botanic Gardens. Living in Glasgow, I didn't even know it was there. It was such a great place to go, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and meeting some random people. And, I think there was a guy yeah. called Ben. Was there a guy called Ben there at the time? There was a guy called Ben and probably Monique. <laughs> Monique, uh, yeah. That. <laughs> That's uh, that's the Ben was a total know it all. Like he he knew everything about the raw diet and but he could never stick to it. He's one yeah. of those guys. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and I remember speaking to you and I was you were talking about where you were shopping and you were talking you spot you shopped at Tesco at Silverburn. I was thinking, Well I shop at the Tesco at Silverburn, where where do you live? So and as you said, it turned out you live within <laughs> literally Quite literally, pretty much within the same estate. One, right. I yeah. could walk to your house in one minute. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so I think we went out for a, a walk, and we, and I think really at that point I was quite nervous, but going to any events wasn't wasn't a confident person. Um, because really I, I'm quite an introverted person as it is, and I never even left the country per se. I didn't have a passport. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was thinking of going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, which is in New York. And yeah, and I think we met up and spoke about that. Um, right. So yeah, that I remember. I think 2013, we went to the first Woodstock Fruit Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got on the plane myself, flew over myself. Yeah, it was, a, it was a whole new experience. So, uh, I mean, that that's a great thing the fruit the fruit diet has done for me. It's given given me more confidence to go and meet people, to talk to people. As much as I'm still very introverted, it, it's really made me broaden my horizons. Maybe fly to places I would never go. It's given me the ability to meet other people. And as you said, I I, I go to various retreats like Grand Retreat in Thailand, or going to Costa Rica with Chris Kendall, or fasting with 
in Florida. Going yeah. to the Woodstock Fruit Festival was really just a great experience. Um, yeah, it was an interesting experience for someone like me as an introvert to go over to America and see 500 Americans. Yeah, yeah well, I think yeah. I think the thing is, I've always said to people that like because it's easier to meet friends somewhere like that because uh, you've got something very in common with people that you can actually connect with. Whereas if you just went to a random thing of 500 people, um, like a music concert or you know a conference or whatever, like often you don't really have a very specific connection. And no. I think I think the people at Woodstock are often looking to make friends because they don't yeah. know anyone else that does it. I, I think it's when you live a lifestyle like this, it really makes you want to connect with other people, especially people who are, who are doing this. Um, it really opens your eyes to what... Um, yeah, so I think that's a big incentive for people when they go to these events. Um, so... Yeah, and I think, so following on from that, I'm sure the first UK Fruit Fest was the year after. 2014, yeah, probably. Yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. So, yeah, so that's... And did, did you come down to the, you didn't come to the uh, the fruit I camp? I didn't, I didn't come to fruit camp, no, because that was, <laughs> I remember very specifically, that was the same weekend that my company was launching our, our major, pro, doing our major product release, so... Yeah. Uh, that was the reason I didn't go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, otherwise I probably would have went. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. So, um, so tell me about about. Well, let's talk about Woodstock first. What's, what was what? What do you think was the best? Um, you went quite a few times. I think you've not been in the last few years. But what were your sort of the, the things that you took from it and your best memories and stuff? Um. So my best memories are are really just the positive vibes of meeting all the people. It's such a positive experience to go and meet all people who are living or eating this way. And it's amazing how, what a positive experience that is and the positive vibes you get from it. So that, that is a huge thing, especially when there's so many people there. It's really quite an experience. Um, and also it was very interesting. Obviously I'd, I'd never been to the US before, so it was really interesting to walk around New York and see all the, the fruit fruit vendors and random smoothie bars that yeah. we, you, know, you maybe don't commonly see where, where we live <laughs> get different fruit and yeah the, so yeah it was just a, such a great location really great food um, great people mm. uh, and a great event overall um, and I think I went I've been apart from last year and obviously well apart from two years ago I, I didn't go um and last year, obviously, it wasn't on. I've been every year, apart from the Hawaii adventure. Yeah, I went. Yeah. To, I've been to almost all of them since my first one. Um, yeah, it was just a really great. I think. Did you event. learn a lot? Did you like the lectures and the, or did you prefer the activities, or what was, what was it for you that? Yeah, I think um, it was going and listening to people. I think I went to a lot of lectures, especially the first few years. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that that was a big part of it for me was going and listening to people like Doug Graham, Doctor Sam, Chris Kendall, doing the yoga. Mm. Um. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of speakers. Um. And I think the events changed over the years. I mean, I think for me, after the first few years of attending lectures, it becomes less of something that I wanted to do. Um. Yes. Yeah. But it still was a, still it's interesting to go and listen to people and and take more in. Uh, you can listen to the same talk a few times and learn new things, so that you maybe missed the first time. So mm, mm, I'm mm. still interested in listening to people, and I think that, that's that's the key difference to the UK fruit fest. It's still a big part of it, um, and I, and I still enjoy listening to people, uh, even though yeah, I, I maybe I'm more experienced now. I, I, a lot of knowledge but still, well, you you gave still a, learn from other people you gave a talk at the UK Fruit Fest this year for the first time or last year sorry yeah did you enjoy that yeah it was definitely a positive experience I got a lot of positive feedback um, again it's not something I naturally do um, being behind the camera being behind the scenes is more my, my natural mm -hmm. state but 
um, yeah, it was interesting to go up and give my story. Um, I feel I could have been better prepared, but, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was certainly enjoyable. Um, it went well, yeah. Yeah, I feel, I feel like, obviously, I've been on this dive for a number of years, and I've got a lot to share. Um, yeah, I've, I've, tr I've, tried, I've tried a lot of things out. For me, it's a lot about experimenting um, with what works, what, what works for me. I mean, what works for me might not work for someone else. Um, so. And the, well, the thing I would say about you is, like, there's a, there's a lot of people talk about the raw diet and stuff, but you're, some, you're one of the people that actually commits a hundred percent raw diet and your diet is very there's not even a lot of as you're saying you wouldn't have a lot of store-bought juices and things like that you don't have a lot of dehydrated stuff or like you know you, you stick to very fresh very raw juicy fruits mostly yeah um, um, why why did why is that rather than like 90 percent raw or whatever some people say they do Right. Yeah, well, there's two points really on that. Why 100% raw? Um, for me, it, it just has to be 100% raw. Uh, I don't feel good eating cooked foods. Like sometimes when I'm traveling, like I was picking up store-bought smoothies and yeah, you just, you just start to notice how bad they feel. <laughs> um, even though they're really, I, I'd always get obviously the highest quality I could buy. But yeah, um, eating 100% raw for me is like, just seems easier um yeah, yeah for me for me it's it's just easier i can't i can't give a, a clear reason why it's easier for me than other people um sure but i think yeah it, it just feels like uh, for me it's all raw or, or not all raw right right <laughs> um, right and but, what what would be your typical diet at the moment be yeah so my typical diet at the moment is whole foods typically mono meals and mm -hmm. um, most days i'll start with melons as i i said at the festival like it's not unusual that i'll take five or ten melons to work and um, five or ten melons <laughs> if i will have a, if I will have a double sitting so i mean typically um <laughs> depends on the size of the melon of course but yeah that that's very common what i have i think where i've been 365 days a year i have melon for breakfast Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously the, mel the melons may change by the season but we were very lucky here in the UK that we, we get a lot of melons coming in from all over the place yeah um, uh, and other than that yeah I, I empty a lot of juicy fruits um, like you said um, so I guess this is following on from my, my water fast that I really made the switch to cut out bananas on a whole on a large scale that's probably the key thing as well as eating whole foods instead of smoothies and juices. So, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, for a lot, for many years, um, bananas were my staple food. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's, they were never really one of my favorite foods. I always felt like I got a mucus reaction from, from eating bananas. Um, sure. Yeah, and people do say that you have to drink water after eating bananas and people suggest that they're they're not as hydrating as other fruits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um and yeah, it's uh, still when I eat them now I get a reaction. So uh, I don't know if it's in my mind if I overate them or what it is, but I yeah. think I get a reaction from beyond bananas as well. Yeah, I just I, but I, I don't mind yeah. it too much, but I don't I don't get the same reaction when I eat apple bananas, for example. Right, okay. Um I noticed when I was in Thailand, if I ate a banana that was similar to a Cavendish banana, I would get the reaction. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I can't put my finger on what it is, but yeah, um, I think not eating bananas doesn't affect me. I, if I really, if I really needed to, I could go and eat them. It's, it's not like I, I avoid them. Um, I mean, even recently, I've ate a lot of apple bananas because I was able to order some in. So, um, so. Yeah, so otherwise I, I eat a lot of whole foods. I eat a lot of grapes, um, mangoes when I can. Um, so my typical diet is I'll have melons for breakfast um, and two other fruit meals and and a salad with my last meal if, if I'm that way inclined. So yeah, um, it's all, I very rarely use my blender nowadays. Um, the only time I use my blender is if I make a dressing for my, my salad typically. Mm -hmm. And it's usually always the same dressing. It's 
one mango, one red pepper blended together. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your salad dressing, one mango, one that, red pepper? Yeah, uh, it makes a great sauce. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I think I eat a, lot, a very simple diet compared to a lot of people. Yeah, sure. I, I don't go for the complex stuff. Do you eat salad really? every every night? No. No. Not every night. Um, so what would be your typical evening? You have 10 melons at work, maybe. And then... So, yeah, <laughs> on a day, sometimes I'll eat, like, so a typical midday, I'll have melons for breakfast. Uh, maybe around 3 o'clock, uh, I'll have another meal, which... Depending on what we're having, where we are in the year, like some points we're getting lots of melons in and I'll have more melons again. So for example, I'll have five cantaloupe melons for breakfast and then five gallia melons for my next meal. And then in the evening, typically, um, depending on what fruit we have, um, I'll have, for example, five, five plus mangoes uh, and then have like a salad with mango dressing. Um, avocado tomato uh so my, my salad is typically just lettuce like pure lettuce uh tomato and avocado that is my salad mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and my dressing if i have the dressing um it's red pepper and mango so yeah <laughs> so uh, your consistency yeah so I'm than consistent. difference yeah so, I mean, it will vary by the season. Like, at the moment, I'm eating a lot of custard apples. Oh, um, nice. Mainly because I'm getting them locally. Uh, well, I'm not getting them locally, but I'm getting them in the shops locally. Um, yeah, I'm eating what? apple bananas because I order some in. Um, Where are you buying custard apples? Marks and Spencer's. All right, okay. I don't, I don't, I think that's nice. Yeah, well, my, my parents are buying them for me, so... <laughs> <coughs> yeah, cool. so... Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, eat, I eat very simply. That that's really where where I've got to. Like over the years, I I drank a lot of smoothies. I drank yeah. a lot of juice. Just my own juice. But now I, I get up in the morning and I I throw some fruit in my bag. I take I take whatever I need to work to open it to eat it. And yeah, whole foods. And I, I think I, it depend, <coughs> depends. Depends on eating whole foods. Uh, I. I, I know when I'm satiated and I, I don't overeat. It feels good. I, I know if it's low quality, like with a smoothie, if you put lots of fruit in, if you get a low quality one, it's just going to bring your smoothie down and yep. and such. But yeah. Excellent. So you're in, you're, you're, uh, you've got quite a big responsible job, CTO, um, managing people and all that. Got a lot of clients, obviously all over the world, like important clients and stuff. Yep. Does is there any negatives with the fruit diet or that lifestyle in in the workplace or in the corporate world or anything like that? Yeah, um, I'd probably say the key thing is like if they're going out for dinner or you're taking a client out for dinner or they're going out for drinks or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I would tend not to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> in my position, I'm more of the technical on the technical side so I, I'm less inclined to do that but in my position it, it, it does come up obviously in the world we're living in now it, it's it's not such an issue but um, yeah um, but, but equally um, I have often having, thought yeah I've often thought that it, it could be a little difficult for like sales people or something who are maybe trying to like bond with people and eat the same food as them and stuff and that yeah, I think you've spoken about that experience before, like, so, and, and I can see how that would happen, but in my experience, yeah, like, I'll typically have a salad or I'll, and no one's really bothered about it. I'm not trying to sell to people. Yeah. I'm usually the, I'm usually the person they want to speak to because I can solve all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, and does, do they, did anyone ask questions at work or, or does that yeah. ever come up? about the diet yeah like it does come up like obviously like it stands out people can see that i'm just eating fruit um but um in my company i've been i'm the one i'm the employee and the employee like he's been there the longest so being being their first move maybe makes it easier yeah and um, i suppose to coming into a new environment but yeah like i just let everyone know and 
like no one seems to bother like more more, more often people will come and tell me they're eating fruit or show me what they're eating yeah um yeah like uh, that that's the positive effect it has on people i think i've learned through the years that it's better not to try and sell it to people it's better to be the example right and um, people will look at you and see what's happening um yeah and i don't make a big deal of it at work like so it's sure so i I make it easy by myself. I just always bring my own fruit with me. Whenever we're having like a pizza night, like I'll bring fruit with me. Um, and it doesn't bother anyone else. So Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. Just, just make it work. And uh, you also have been to a couple of retreats. Yes. I'd like to ask you about those. I, I don't know if I've really been to a retreat. I kind of have, but... Um, yeah. So they're they're kind of like smaller than the festivals, more focused, probably a little bit more fancy with the food, I would imagine. Um, so you, what was been your experiences of them? Yeah, so um, I think I've been to Chris Kendall's retreat in Costa Rica. I've been to Grant Campbell's retreat in Thailand. And my fashion retreat was quite different. So I'll talk, we'll talk about, about that retreat. after. Yeah, we'll talk about that yeah. separately. Yeah, so I mean, a really great experience for me. Um, I think going to a festival is a big crowd, but going to these retreats, it's, it's a small, it's a small group of people, and yeah, it's just really, really great to be with like-minded people and, and small and, and nice locations. Like going to Costa Rica, I was getting to try different fruits like Rolinia, which I'd never tried before. Um, yeah, and being with other people, which like usually the retreats I've been to are like their action retreats. So we're, we're climbing up mountains, going down to the seaside and surfing or mm. yeah. So yeah, it's really a great place to go get sunshine and be with great people. Like going to Thailand also was a great experience. We had durian every day. We had pineapple for breakfast every day. So yeah, it's just going to these places with other people is something I really enjoy doing. Um, going to an organized event and there's always it's just really action-packed like Grant Campbell's retreat is like full-on adventure every day um so yeah I, I really recommend going to these, these places that if you can um for me it was a really great experience meeting new people and eating new fruit and yeah yeah awesome and what what made you decide to go and do a water fast yeah, um, so I guess it's something I've been interested in for a while. Um, it's something I did two years ago exactly. At this point, I would be water fasting. Um, I I guess I learned about it at first at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, um, where Doug gave a talk on it and, and explained it. Um, and after that, I've seen other people going and doing it. I've seen them online going to do the water fast. Um, yeah, and I, at that point, this would have been back in probably 2013, I thought I'll just try it for a day or two. Um, yeah, and it was an interesting experience. Um, and I guess the general thing I felt that my body wanted to keep going with it. <laughs> That was the that was the feeling I had when I tried water fasting. Like I just wanted to keep water fasting. Mm -hmm. so obviously, I wasn't in the position to do it. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and yeah, so I I gave up on it at that point. Um, but all through my my many years after that, um, I tried various smaller fasts, which I came to realize that doing small fast, one day fast, were not really a huge benefit to me at that point. I was quite skinny at the point. I think felt I just I just lost more weight and couldn't really put it back on as as readily as I would like. Yeah. Um. So generally, uh, I feel the main reason that I wanted to water fast was to improve my digestion was my key aim. I personally felt that I was maybe not absorbing as much as I could as effectively as I could. Uh, I'm watching videos from Lauren Lockman. I feel like I, I got the impression that that's something that, that potentially could be resolved yeah. by water fasting. Mm -hmm. So I guess the opportunity came up uh, a few years ago that I could get the necessary time off work. 
Um, I had sufficient cover at work and uh, and yeah, I decided to go and work fast with Lauren. I watched a lot of his videos online beforehand. I spoke to him beforehand and yeah, I was really up for it. Um, and yeah, this we started just at the end of December a few years ago. Um, I did a 21 day water fast and yeah, it was, it was a very interesting experience. The first thing I would say it was a very positive experience because I was fasting with other people who are all doing the same and at first it doesn't really feel like you're fasting when I was at home fasting myself uh, you, it, it was a, lot, a bit harder but being in this environment yeah um, it just felt really easy but for me yeah, the first week was quite difficult because I had a lot of pain <laughs> what I felt was in my stomach <laughs> um, I don't know if this is because what I was focusing on I wanted to fix this is my Body decided to fix. I, right. I don't know, um, but generally, yeah, I had a lot of pain. Where a lot, it seemed a lot easier for everyone else in the group in the first week. Um, yeah, um, but that released by the second week, um, and the second week I was very energetic. So, like everyone else was on the way down, and I, I seemed to be very energetic in the second week. So, not quite sure why. I, I was, but yeah. Um, and in the second week, when I was drinking the water, it tasted kind of sweet. That was the other strange thing about being on the water fast is as you went through the water fast, the water kind of changed or it perceived to change. Yeah. Um, which was suggested that it was basically because of what your body's producing in your mouth and your tongue potentially is, is altering the flavor of it. Yeah. Um, and everyone else was, was kind of commenting the same, that it tasted really sweet, whereas in the first week it just tasted plain. Um, and yeah. And then in the third week, I guess, I had a back injury that I could start to feel. Like, this was quite a recent back injury that I had. Um, it was my upper back. And yeah, I could start to feel this through the fast. Um, on the third week, um, wasn't wasn't that painful, but I could just feel it. Um, and I I'd felt it previously that I had already healed, but yeah. maybe it wasn't maybe it wasn't perfect. But this is what my body decided to to do. Like, uh, decided to do something on my back, and it, it feels brand new now. And um, so that's what it decided to do. Um. Yeah, but the third week was quite difficult for me because I got really quite skinny um, and quite lethargic uh, on the last week. Um, so I felt at that point I was really ready to eat again. Um, my roommate, on by contrast, um, he felt after 21 days water fast and he was really just getting started. <laughs> so he came from a, a different point of me. Like his last meal was a cheeseburger, he says, whereas my last meal was papaya. Um, <laughs> Yes, I felt like I, I came into the fast really ready to go and uh, and really and really went with the process. Where for him, he came in, he was he was quite well built, and yeah, I think it was maybe an easier experience for him. Like sure. every day when we we did our checks, like we'd always check your your blood pressure and and such, and his results were always the top of the class. Like his were perfect. Oh wow! Whereas mine's mine's were always. Um, need to drink more water, need to drink more water. Uh, and that's, that's a big thing I've learned from the water fast and is sipping water, learning to drink a lot of water because that, that's one of the key premises of it is that we're trying to rehydrate old mm -hmm. hard material that's perhaps there from our old lifestyle that we're trying to remove. Um, so, yeah. Um, so once I started refeeding, um, yeah, it was a great experience because the fruit just tastes amazing after not eating for for 21 days like we were eating really great coconut water and great melons and and such and that was a really great experience i think a great experience because i was doing it with other people um um there was like four or five of us all in the same group be feeding together so it was a really great experience to be with other people um, yeah, and throughout the week, you just get stronger. You're told to do more exercise uh, after the third or fourth day refeeding. Yeah, and so I would do the rebounder, uh, go on walks around the location. Um, yeah, uh, and everything seemed fine until the last evening. 
Um, what happened then? So in the last evening, yeah, I, we're preparing for our last meal. Um, so typically our last meal is a big salad, um, but that's optional. Like everyone had gone for the big salad. I'd gone for papaya. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly on the comment of someone else who had left the day before who had their salad who kind of wished that they had fruit and I didn't really feel like having a salad at that point. Yeah. Um, but preparing for that, I went on the rebounder. Uh, and just after being on the rebounder, I just started to feel kind of unwell. Um, wasn't sure what was happening. I just couldn't eat my meal. And yeah, and wasn't really sure what was going on. And this is the night before we were leaving. But yeah, yeah, uh, I just felt like something in my stomach or, or something. So yeah, but it kind of went away after a while. Um, so yeah, we went to the the airport the next day uh, and yeah and then I just got the sensation starting again on the way to the airport whenever I ate something it, it just kind of triggered or drank something it kind of triggered I wasn't really sure what was going on um, and then on the plane yeah same um, so yeah this was a really weird experience uh, just felt when what it felt like was whenever I drank or ate something, um, after a short while, I'd start to feel like, it felt like acid was being pumped into my left arm or something. I could just mm. feel it in my bloodstream. Mm. Um, uh, and I think this is what was happening. Um, what I think was happening is that something was getting broken up mm. in my system uh, and being removed um, because I could feel it in my stomach as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or what I perceived to be my stomach. Um, so that's what I think was happening. As I drank something, it would continually break it up. So uh, when I got home, I spoke to Lauren, and he said just to keep following the process and maybe consider having a salad, because obviously I hadn't had a salad at this point. Um, so getting home, it was kind of weird, because my parents we maybe see it, saw me not in the best state <laughs> getting yeah. home even though I, I, I'd done really well at the refeeding point up to day, day six it just this kind of took over this experience um, and yeah I I took Lauren's advice and had a salad so that was fine and then maybe three to four hours I went to bed later and then it just all kicked off Um it just felt like it, it was exploding. <laughs> Everyone was inside me. Like the salad, I don't know if it was the salad was because I was taking a salad that was really moving the stuff on and it started exploding. And I could just feel it. Um, wow. It was really quite an experience. But after that, the next day, um, it really started to mellow. Like I was still getting the same experience, but it was a lot smaller. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, so my theory is potentially what it was doing was removing potentially the Accutane that built up in my system, the mm-hmm. remnants of some drugs or something. Um, and it had just taken this opportune moment to, to remove it. I think it maybe just unfortunate it happened on the flight home. Because um, if anyone who flies a lot would know that flying is quite dehydrating and you want to drink a lot of water. But every time I drank water, I just felt worse. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But ultimately, I was glad to go through the experience. It wasn't a negative experience. It was just... Uh, a difficult challenge I had to go through uh, sure. which ultimately I feel must have been a positive thing yeah because re- really I believe that the body is going to do what it feels it does can do best yeah. to preserve yeah. and, and help heal you so yeah um it was an interesting experience but really yeah uh, it maybe adds to the fact that the fast had managed to move something uh, have you have you have you experienced long-term benefits from the fast if, as have things changed you mentioned your yeah. back healing and yeah, I think ultimately I feel a lot more confident uh, in the way I eat. Uh, I feel, that, as I said, I went there to try and improve my digestion. I feel like, yeah, I, I can eat a slightly less food and, and feel satiated. I can maintain my weight better. Um, right. So, which is what I wanted to achieve. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it was a very positive experience. Uh, I feel it's one of the best things I've done. I would not... I do not regret it in any way. I would, I would have to fast again um, if I had the opportunity. Great. So, yeah. So, so um, 
just changing tag a little bit, what would be sort of your advice for people that are starting off trying to get to, trying to go towards raw? What would be my advice for someone who's going towards raw? Um, yeah, I think it would be to take it gradually, um, mm. to start having fruit, adding fruit into their diet, adding more fruit into their diet as opposed to taking anything out of their diet like adding fruit for breakfast mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Find, finding the fruits that they enjoy uh, and adding them in and starting eating more of them yeah make it a gradual thing um that would be my my main advice i, mean, I think what i've learned is eating whole foods um ultimately maybe better as opposed to drinking smoothies but for someone who's, who's just learning or coming from another diet and um, having a smoothie might be easier for them to, to get more calories in initially. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the key thing to learn is when fruit, fruit is right, what, what fruit is good, and, and really getting to know the fruit in your area. Um, that's a challenge I always find is when I, when I go away in trips and come back, I don't know what fruit is in, what fruit's good in the local area, my local area. I need to go and go, and go to the shops and understand it again. Um, so that's a skill that you have to learn is learn when fruit is good and what fruit what fruit is good uh, yeah. yes yeah well thank you very much matthew for giving us some of your time um uh, i just want to say at this point uh, for anyone that wants to uh, follow more and get more get notifications about the love fruit podcast you can go to fruitfest.co.uk and you can sign up for a newsletter there and you can see other news and blogs and all sorts of stuff there information and feel free to follow us on youtube uh, uk fruit fest um and obviously you can hear the podcast on spotify apple itunes and stitcher and all and all sorts of other places um so i just wanted to say that before we before we finish um so if uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you i don't know if you're open to that but if if people want to ask you more questions or are you open to that would you like to or, or they could they could send the questions to us if you like and we could pass them on to you or something or yeah um i mean i don't really have a public profile that people can contact that's not really what i, I sure. do um sure. but yeah if, if anyone really wants to contact me or they can certainly probably best to contact you and you can forward them on to me okay um, no that's problem. probably the easiest at this point until I decide to go public in future life. <laughs> yeah. So you can email us at info at fruitfest.co.uk. If you've got any questions for Matthew, we'll pass them on. Um, and and maybe, maybe, maybe there's some software engineers out there who are looking for a job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or maybe they're looking to give you a job. Who knows? You never know. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do you see your future looking like? Um, I imagine you've you've been on the fruit diet like seven eight years now, so I imagine you're going to keep doing that. Do you see yourself staying in Scotland, or what do you see yourself doing? Any ideas? Um, that, that's a that's a great question. It's something I debate about a lot within myself. Um, at the moment, um, apart from the craziness that's going on in the world, I'm really happy with where I'm at. Yeah, I really yeah. I really love my job that I do. Um, I think we're a very ethical company and that really resonates with me and my diet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately, living in Scotland, it's not the sunniest place and, and I enjoy the sunshine. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know where the world is going uh, at the moment. So that's a big question mark. Um, so, but at the moment where I am, I'm really happy. Um, Excellent. I'm close to my family, good, good friends and, and great job. So, yeah. Um, ultimately, ultimately, I, I look for yeah. You're for like happiness. one. You're one of like you're one of life's happy people. Like you, <laughs> you, you love your job. Like there's no. I don't hear. I don't speak to so many people who, are, who say that. Like I love my job and like the company I work for and all that. It's kind of rare. It feels like. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think it just kind of naturally happened that that job. Like I had to go and work for free to get that job. Like the company kind of built up around me and um so yeah it just it just fate just brought us brought me together cool. um cool. so yeah i didn't really know where i was going at that point so yeah, yeah but, but as you say yeah like 
if I didn't love my job, I, I would do something else. I may be more like other people who, who have the time to travel around the world more like, like that's why I t that's probably why I tend to go to specific events. Like they're organised. It's an organised time. I know it's going to be organised, and I can go to that. I take the time off and go to that. Um, yeah, I, I don't really think anyone's missing out not being able to travel, like <clears throat> travel and stuff like that. I think the events are always the highlight. Like if oh yeah, you get yeah. more from that week than you get from a month of like I don't know just sitting around in Thailand on a beach and having occasional meetups with people and stuff like there's no way that that it doesn't match at all of the, uh, the festival experience which is just such a yeah. just like amazing community that comes together sort of thing yeah I mean I think the, the UK Fruit Fest every year gets better and better the Woodstock Fruit Fest every year gets better and better and I think Going to the UK Fruit Fest every year is, is just that's a special experience. I mean, I think especially last year event was just yeah, it's just magical. So um and that's in the UK where the weather's not always great. It's we had a lot of wind stuff. the first few days. It was like windy, like the the tent was shaking. Uh, yeah. but actually got the but it was only the first couple of days it was kind of looking a bit windy and Rain yeah, down. not like it, it didn't dampen the event. Like we did, we had no rain. Like as as still sun, we do still have sunshine here in the UK, even in Scotland. That's yeah, that one day, that one day a year, as we like to joke about. Um, it's kind of looking back. It's kind of it's kind of amazing that it actually happened. To be honest, like with looking back now, I'm thinking about the coronavirus situation, right? And I'm kind of yeah. like, yeah, it's um because there was a lot. Yeah cancelled a lot of people couldn't come because they were from other countries they couldn't travel and stuff um <clears throat> but it still happened let's let's talk about the whole what's your i mean you've got some interesting opinions around the coronavirus stuff the, the lockdown the the regulations and all that yeah um well fundamentally i, I disagree with with the lockdowns uh, uh i fundamentally there's another agenda at play and yeah, um, mm. it's it's clear for me to say. Uh, uh, I just find it surprising that many people are just going along with it. Um, I don't agree with wearing masks or staying home. I believe in breathing fresh air and and meeting other people is is really important to our health overall. Um, you made a good point to me at one point that like we're meant to share viruses with each other. Like that's part of immunity as yeah, well. Like. Um, so I mean I think my experience was when when the lockdowns in the summer were kind of lifted and in my organisation more people would come back to the office um, and as they came back to the office they all started feeling a little unwell and and I and I put that down to kind of like the same thing as you travel another place like you're not used to the viruses that are going around or or being right. shared the information that's being shared between people. Uh, and as people are, who are locked out, walking away from each other, like they're they're not experiencing this, their body's not used to this, and I think that's kind of like a natural thing that it just happens naturally. It's like natural herd immunity. Yeah. Even if it's such a, a little minor thing, um, that that's that's kind of what I've I've read little things about. It's not something I'm an expert in. I can't really say well, I think, great confidence, but yeah, I think it, I think that's my perception. Like I always I always tried to. Like even through the, the the restrictions, like still contact other people and and not and make sure that I'm keeping myself up to date. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just like with herd immunity and stuff. There's a whole natural thing of when someone's sick, we tend to stay away from them. They tend to stay away. They tend to stay at home. Yeah, people that are I well stay, uh, can pass it across like I'm not really convinced that there's a lot of asymptomatic spread happening I think there's a lot of spread happening in hospitals yeah like uh, I mean I think that's the great thing about it it's an invisible virus so how can anyone say with great confidence what's going on but um, yeah I think as you say if someone is really unwell they're going to stay at home in bed and effectively self-isolate <laughs> that's going to naturally happen um, so I I don't believe that the that, that lockdowns or mandating things is actually necessary. Uh, I think we would not even be talking about it at this point if we, we'd done nothing, yeah. if the world had done nothing. Um, so, 
it's that's why I suggest it's ultimately another reason for it. Um, and yeah. Sure, sure. Well, um, thanks for joining us today, Matthew. And uh, hopefully we can maybe do this again sometime. And it's uh, always good to stay in touch. And I, I do want to say to everyone that Matthew's been uh, an amazing help with the UK Fruit Fest and has... Um, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I just think you're one of the, the, the best people involved in it and one of the good people that anyone can trust. And you're, as I say, you're a legitimate raw fooder, like 100% raw person. And uh, so people should really listen to what you're saying. So thanks a lot for taking the time to speak to us today. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. So thank you everyone for watching, listening to the Love Fruit Podcast. You can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us uh, on Spotify and other podcast places feel free to get in touch with us info at fruitfest.co.uk we'd love it if you shared it with other people and help spread the message and uh, we'll see you in the next episode